welcome to uh, you to one of the uh, videos of the many, I hope, uh, in uh, uh, learning about our labs. Uh, we felt it was necessary to do this for two reasons. Uh, the first reason for as a review, all right, in, uh, in uh, your chapter tests at the end of your units, and also in the case that you might be absent from class, and then you get a chance to be able to see the lab and know what it is that we have accomplished while we were here. All right, so let's get started. This particular one that we're doing today is located on page 84 in your grade 8 science textbook. And I've got it written up here. It's uh, Science 8 Activity 3-1, and it's on page 84. And the title is Learning How Liquids Lose Heat. Uh, there's two parts to it, so you have to keep uh, in mind that when you're actually doing the lab. Uh, not only are we going to be heating up liquids today, but we're also going to be letting them cool down because that's equally important. So right. the, uh, the lab that we're going to be doing, as I said, is on page 84, and it is the Learning How Liquids Lose Heat. Uh, it's done as a demonstration because it involves a hot plate where uh, things could get overheated if you're not doing it properly. So, uh, remember the information in the textbook that we were talking about the salt water in the ocean. And we've gone through La Nina and El Nino uh, in terms of how our uh, atmosphere can build up pressure and uh, things get overheated. Uh, and what we want to demonstrate today is the fact that salt water in these containers uh, can hold on to heat a lot and it also takes a long time for it to heat up as well. So it can heat up takes a long time for it to heat up when it does, and then it also takes a long time for it to cool down. So what I'm going to start to do is put on my glasses to begin with, and uh, what I need to establish is I've got about, I'm going to put in, I'm going to set some controls now for the actual experiment. Uh, we're looking at the manipulated variable, all right, which has to do with heat. I'm not going to give you the answer on that one yet, all right, but it has to do with heat and the responding variable is what happens as a result of us adding heat. So think about those two variables while I'm doing the experiment. Also, what I'm doing now is I'm gonna set some controls. So I have to make sure that what actually is being tested is tested. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 200 milliliters of water to each beaker or Erlenmeyer flask and again, I'm establishing the controls, 200 for each one. Okay, make sure it's evened out there. Alrighty, and the last one here. It's all about ensuring that what you're testing is the actual thing that is being tested by establishing all the parameters. So, right now we have three beakers with equal amounts of ordinary tap water. Then we're now going to take test tubes that have our fluids in them. And in this case, the fluids that we're going to be using are oil, salt water, and ordinary tap water. And what we want to see is how they're going to heat up to begin with. So I am going to put some ordinary tap water in this one. Again, controls equals amount, or equal amount, sorry. All right, so I'm going to put this much water in this Erlenmeyer flask. And again, the reason why we use water uh, as a background to heating up these flasks is, uh, or sorry, heating up the test tubes, is because then it doesn't get too overheated, and we don't want any mishaps going on in the lab. All right, and then I'm going to take the salt water with the same amount. Again, it's approximately about 50 milliliters we're using. All right, and this one right here is salt water. So again, I have to make sure that it's equal amounts. So let's take it. All right, a little bit more. So again, very important for setting up your lab. And then the last one we're going to use is we want to see how oil works. I know that on the stove sometimes, oil takes a while to heat up, but uh, it holds its heat a lot as well. So we want to take a look at the oil. Now, how are we going to measure the heat when we actually get started? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thermometers and we're putting it inside the test tubes. Each one is at uh, average room temperature, which is 22 degrees Celsius. 
So when we put all three in, now we have to go to our graph, or sorry, our table, and that's located on your lab. So you uh, hopefully will get that on my homework page so that you can actually take a printable copy of this. And the first chart indicates that you have to complete the following table. We're going to be timing this for a total of five minutes. And every, sec every 30 seconds, we're going to be recording what the temperatures of all three liquids or fluids is going to be like. So at zero minutes right now, all right, I'm getting my timer going. At zero minutes or zero seconds, I'm going to start it. And I want you to write in the salt water right now is at 22 degrees Celsius. The cooking oil is at 22 degrees Celsius. And so is the fresh water or the tap water is at 22 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to turn on the hot plate here now. Alrighty, and as I turn on the hot plate, I'm also going to start the time. So be ready with your pen in hand. Uh, after every 30 seconds, we are going to be recording what the actual temperature of all three of those in the table that is provided to you. All right, so our first example, and it's a run time. You have to keep the time going, and you have to look at your Erlenmeyer flasks every single time 30 seconds is up. So we're ready for the first one. All right, it is now 30 seconds. So I am looking at the ordinary fresh water, and that's still reading 22. I'm looking at the salt water, that's reading 22, and I'm reading the oil, and that's reading 22. Getting ready to do another 30 seconds, which would be at one minute. Okay, so there's about seven seconds, so I'm gonna get ready. And we go again. So salt water is now at about 23. Fresh water is at about 23. And the oil is at about 22 seconds. So we're gonna continue this whole process for a total of five minutes, filling in all the information from each particular flask as they heat up. And then we're gonna take a look at the results after that. We're back, and just to explain, remember we had some controls going on here. The beakers are still being, or the flasks are still being uh, heated up. Some of our controls were the same even heating source, the same size uh, flasks or beakers, the same amount of water, same amount of fluids and the same type of thermometers. All of these things would be the controls that we're looking at. All right, it is now five minutes since we've been timing this. And our last count, uh, we've got our fresh water and that would be at 38 degrees Celsius right now. And we have our uh, oil at 33 degrees Celsius and then we have our salt water at 32 degrees Celsius. So now what I have to do, this is the second part of the lab, part B. You now have to be concerned with timing how quickly that they cool down, or maybe how slowly they cool down. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take these particular um, flasks off of the heating source. The countertop is made for that, so we're safe. All right, and then I'm actually going to take the test tubes out of the flasks and lay them on the cooling rack. Okay, very gently. And again, I know which one is which, so it doesn't matter where they actually are. Here we go. Always make sure you have a good grip on it. That's the reason why they want the teachers to do this lab. Very easy to get burned. Okay. So now we're going to start the process. I'll make sure that this is turned off. All right, and it indicates that the hot plate is still very hot. So I have to make sure that it's uh, moved away so that we don't harm ourselves. Okay, so that's just going to cool off on the side. So are the beakers of hot water. And now we're going to get started with actually recording what the cool down rate is like. So again, with the timer starting, the timer has been going, so it's about 30 seconds coming up now, and we're going to record our first one at 30 seconds as to what the temperature is. All right, and this one right here, which is the actual fresh water, is at 38 degrees Celsius. The oil 
is at 32 degrees Celsius, and the fresh water is at 32 degrees Celsius. All right, so again, I'll continue on for 30 seconds, and we have to go a total of five minutes. So at one minute now, the fresh water is at 36 degrees Celsius, the oil is at 32 degrees Celsius, and the salt water is at 32 degrees Celsius. So we're going to continue this process now for a total of five minutes and then get the calculation as to uh, what the final one is at five minutes and how slowly or how quickly each one of them cool down. So the last particular one that we're using at the five minute mark, our uh, fresh water is now gone down to about, um, let's take a look, it's gone down to about 30, uh, 30 uh, sorry, about 33 degrees Celsius. Our oil is gone down to about 36, all right, and our salt water is actually gone down to about I said, well, it's about 37 degrees, so it's still holding its heat. We also noticed there for a while that the oil, instead of dropping drastically uh, when I was timing it, it actually uh, increased in heat at one point, even though the heating source wasn't there to begin with. So that was a little bit bizarre. All right, so the last thing that you need to do with your lab is to make sure that you have your graphing paper. And remember, Malcolm X, so you have your manipulated variable that goes on the bottom part of the graph, and you have the responding variable which goes on the side of the graph. Remember, manipulated is on the left-hand side of the table, but on the x-axis. And the responding one is that it should be on the left-hand side. All right, so coming back to what I was saying about manipulated and responding, we now know through the lab, if it's on the left-hand side of the table, that means the manipulated variable has to be the, um, the, the time, all right, that we've used. Then the responding, what happened as a result of taking the time of these liquids, you then have the actual degrees in Celsius, all right? If you're looking and you're seeing these particular beakers or these uh, test tubes here on the sheet and you're saying, well, where do they go on the graph? What you're actually realizing is that each one of these would be a different line on your graph. All right, so you're going to need to use a legend up on top to tell me which one is oil, which one is salt water, and which one is fresh water. You're going to need to make sure on the bottom that you put from zero to five minutes in 30 second intervals equally. And you're also going to need to make sure up here on the side that you put the proper data in terms of what the degree Celsius was. So I think we didn't go any higher than about 40 degrees Celsius. So if you want to go up by twos, you can go by twos there. All right. Uh, so you should have three lines done. However, what you don't realize is that because you were looking at two particular parts of this lab, the uh, three lines have to go on your graph for the heat up time and then you have three lines for the cool down time. So you can choose to use the same graph and put six lines total on the graph, or you can use two separate pieces of graphing paper and put three on one and three on the other. All right, and what we're gonna be doing is comparing the data to see how quickly they all cooled up, uh, sorry, heated up, and how quickly they all cooled down. Once you have that information done, uh, I want you to check it with me, check it with your teacher, and then after uh, we've ensured that your graphs are done properly and that your lines have been all joined up, all the dots, I want you to take a look at page 84. It has some important questions to ask you that you have to answer at the bottom. 
Um, it says section A is the table that, or the, yes, the table that you fill in. Section B is also the table that you fill in for cooling. And section C is plotting your data on the graph paper, which in this case would be a line graph and not a bar graph. So please don't get confused by that. If you want a little bit more detail about how to do the graph, it's located on page 84, and uh, you're actually reading down step five. Also, uh, we'll tell you a little bit more about it. To end it off, you have some questions in section D, and that, uh, there's three of them. What I'd like for you to answer based on what we've done here today, and you cannot answer these questions unless you do your graph first. All right, you're looking at which liquid heated up the quickest, uh, which liquid kept its heat the longest, that is, which one cooled down the slowest, and what do the results in your graph suggest about specific heat capacity of water, salt, water, and oil? Okay, by now you should have your graph all done up. Uh, don't forget about your title on the top of the graph. Uh, and remember in grade eight, we don't use verses anymore. So you should have a title to the lab uh, that would be appropriate for the, um, the Celsius that you were using for the temperature and also for measuring time, time and temperature. So think about that and the reason why you were doing it. So you should have something in your title about uh, three different substances being heated up over a period of time and what the temperature was. All right, so see what you can do with that one. In the meantime, you should now have your six different lines on your graph, and you should also have the legend written down there. And did you remember to make sure that it's equal intervals that you put on the graph on the bottom and on the side, because you can't just plot your points on the side and then also put them in the graph, all right? Uh, now, to end it off, here's what we should be having, the data that we've collected. Uh, question number one, as a recap, just to ensure that you've understood the lab. It says, which liquid heated up the quickest? All right, it looked like right now that the fresh water was the one that heated up the quickest. Uh, that's what your data should have indicated. Um, we also found out in our classroom when we did the lab that the oil and the salt water were pretty well on par in terms of heating up. However, there was a big difference in the cool down. So once you've taken a look at the three different lines for the heating up, then you've answered question uh, number one in part D. The next question then, number two, which liquid kept its heat the longest? That is, which one cooled down the slowest? Well, we found out in the lab that it was actually the salt water that cooled down the slowest. So it, was, it kept its heat for the amount of time that it was needed. The oil seemed to do that as well, but what was really bizarre with the results is that there was at one point that I mentioned that the oil actually heated up when we didn't have any heat source added to it. So that was a little bit different. But in the meantime, the oil did heat up more and it, it started to cool down gradually as well. But for holding its heat and maintaining its heat and cooling down, we found that the salt water was the best. All right, and lastly, what do the results in your graph suggest about the specific heat capacity of water? Well, the first one is water, that would be ordinary tap water. It heats up quickly and it cools down quickly, and we know that, especially in the bathtub. Don't leave the water for too long because it's going to cool down really quickly. The second one is the oil. We know that because oil uh, sometimes are on uh, stoves at home for deep frying. And uh, we've always been taught that uh, oil is very unsafe, it's very unpredictable. So to always have it contained when you're using it uh, because of that bizarre little thing that went on. And then lastly, the salt water, as we already know, and especially being Newfoundlanders here, um, that uh, well into the spring of the year, our salt water tends to be very cold while the atmosphere, the air around us is really warm. And then the opposite happens in the uh, late August months, in the summer months. We find that uh, the air cools off, but uh, the salt water still stays warm. Hence, that's why we get a lot of fog. So I hope that this lab has been really beneficial for you today. And if you didn't have a chance to do it, I'm uh, glad to be of service to be able to explain it to you. Uh, if there's any other questions that you needed to be addressed, you can either email me, um, uh, Ms. Sullivan here at the website, 
uh, for panther.k12.nf.ca, or you can come and see me in the classroom. All right, take care. Hope, hopefully you enjoy.